So when you have really, really choppy water, you got to think about a shorter stroke versus mm -hmm. a nice long stroke. Because if you're in the pool, you can work on beautiful form and look amazing. But mm -hmm. choppy water is completely different swimming. Welcome to the I Race Like a Girl podcast, where a professional triathlete and an age grouper talk all things sport and life. We are here to educate and enlighten, but most importantly, to keep it real. We are your hosts, Amy Woods and Angela Nate. Let's race to it. Hi, everyone. Today we are talking about open water swimming. From wetsuits to water temp, dolphin diving and sighting, we talk about all of it. We also spend time talking about panic in open water, especially during racing. Both Angela and I have had moments where our brains kind of flip a switch and give us danger signals, but we talk about strategies to help you get through that if that has happened to you. One of my favorite parts in this episode is when Angela and I talk about pace and GPS watches in open water. If there is one way I can frustrate Angela, and you will hear it in here, it's when I talk about my swim pace and grumble about what my watch is telling me, especially in open water. What's funny is I can give out the advice that Angela tries to give me, but for some reason I still cannot let go of pace in open water, and I know I'm not alone. So, have a listen to this episode, and hopefully you are already swimming in open water because it's just warming up here on Cape Cod, and we love open water. Have a listen. Hi, everybody, and welcome back to the I Race Like a Girl podcast. We are here today to talk all about open water and mastering open water, uh, which is my favorite place to swim but it's a little cold here now. But Angela, you have been in open water a couple times. Are you ready so to talk you. about it? So I have you. been. I have been. It's a little cold. Yeah, it's um, definitely my favorite. Definitely. Yeah. Um, so we have a lot of topics to cover to get you ready for your open water season. If you are listening to this and you are in a warmer climate, you are probably already in open water. But for many of us here in New England, the ponds and lakes and ocean are still pretty cold, doable, doable, but still pretty cold. In fact, our local swimming um pond measured 60 degrees yesterday it's been up and down between 60 and 63 so uh but we are excited because it's warming up so let's actually start angela by just talking about water temp mm -hmm. and you know some people can handle colder water or you get so excited to jump into open water but let's talk first about safety and gear for open water and what temp what is your cutoff? What's, what's your, your what's your like? Um, I'm not gonna go mine's, in. Mine's around sixty. I mean, I've been in fifty five to eight, fifty eight, and it's cold. I mean, my hands just turn to to bricks, and even with like a thermal on, so I like above sixty, like sixty two ish. So right now, I, I mean, it's fine, but but I have to have a thermal. Mm -hmm. And when I say thermal, it has a nice thick insulation compared to just like this the standard wetsuit. Mm -hmm. um, otherwise, it's just it's just too cold for me. Yeah, it is. I would say for me, 62, <laughs> maybe. Um, just because I mean, I'll go in for like 10 minutes mm -hmm. in 60. But if I want to actually do a workout like a 30 minute swim 45 and feel confident and safe, I know mm -hmm. for my body, it's about 62. I know when we did Arizona, or I did Arizona a couple years ago, it was 63. And I started getting cold even at 63. Yeah. Um, so I think for water temp, it does depend how long you are going to be in that swimming in that water temp to, to think about the temperature and what your body can handle. Some people can handle cold mm -hmm. much, much more easily. And I would say just like acclimate, like there's obviously open water swimmers that, that don't even use a wetsuit. At, oh, I know. These temps, but I mean, they got a little bit of extra body fat specifically for that on them. They, they acclimate throughout like months, you know, um, and we're just going to jump in, you know, I know, as we see fit, but yeah, I would definitely measure the temps first and see what you can handle before jumping into a workout. Yeah. And, and speaking of that, it's something maybe we should have started with, but just 
when you're getting ready to go into open water for the first or 41st time, you, you want to be safe and you want to, you're not really supposed to swim by yourself in open water. Um, now I know some of us listening to this do it because sometimes it's very, very hard to coordinate swimming with somebody. And, uh, if you're working or you're going after work or you're finding 30 minutes here and there to jump in, but it, having a buddy system really helps. And I always swim with a safer swim buoy, um, just in case, and because even though it drags behind me and some people think it probably does slow you down a little bit, I like having it as a little safety net, especially when the water is really, really cold. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I would say when it's cold, it definitely is a safety net for sure because you just know that you have something to hold on to in case. Yeah, and you can just get those like anywhere. I mean, you can get mm -hmm. them from stores, from Amazon. There's all sorts of things. And so now we talked about water temp on the flip side, though. If it is really warm, uh, as we go through the summer, you really don't want to wear a wetsuit because you're going to overheat, which is also dangerous if you're out there and you're getting really hot. Have you ever been in a swim where you've overheated? I mean, you have you have pretty strict wetsuit rules. Yeah, right? for the for my races, no, never. <laughs> yeah, you're always freezing. freezing. I'm having big issues. Um, I usually take the wetsuit off around 75 ish mm -hmm. 74 you can even do it very easily our mm -hmm. cutoff is 72 which is ridiculous mm -hmm. so i sometimes do that um for lake placid last year i think it was like 73 still pretty chilly um did you get cold at the end of lake placid oh, a yeah. little bit you did yeah it mm -hmm. just shuts me down but mm -hmm. not like i did in this previous race i was annihilated i know um but yeah i i think i think once you are consistently going in the water you can you can consider colder temps because again, it just takes a little bit of practice and time to see what you can do and handle. Um, but I, I like 74, 75 feels, feels good. Mm -hmm. I will wear my, I mean, I mean, 80 feels fantastic. Oh yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying like, that's my cutoff. I can get rid of the wetsuit because I have to, I mean, I have no choice. I know races, I can go so. up to, what is it? 76, 77, 76.8 or something. Something like yeah. that. And I will wear it in the pond oh, yeah. all the way up. <laughs> I, love my, I love my wetsuit. So let's talk about oh. wetsuits because if you're listening to this, you might be thinking of getting a new wetsuit, uh, getting a wetsuit for the first time, sleeves, sleeveless, um, things like that. So First of all, we both use Blue 70. Mm -hmm. I do love their brand. Um, I think their wetsuits fit really well. They never, never like choke me in the mm -hmm. neck like um, a couple other brands. So we both use that brand. There are uh, some other solid brands out there. Uh, but what do you, what should you look for and how when you are buying a wetsuit? Let's start with that. So let's say somebody is going to go out and get a wetsuit. Are this new wetsuit, like new person? New person, new person. Yeah, so most wetsuit um, companies have a range. So they have a beginner, an intermediate, and a more uh, pro level, I guess you could say, or elite level uh, wetsuit. And basically, they just go up in price, <laughs> two or three hundred dollars. <laughs> oh my floor. gosh, yeah. And the biggest difference is just almost just the flexibility in the shoulders. Yes. And sometimes that's not always beneficial for some people. Um, and I'll I'll talk about that in a minute. But what I would look for is maybe just go in the middle ground. You can get a really good wetsuit that's like 500 bucks um, and make sure you just try it on in the store. You'll want to talk to someone if you've never actually experienced putting on a wetsuit because you're going to think that it's really, really tight, but it's not. Right. So you want to try it on and see how it feels. Um, it will feel a little bit tight. It, like obviously not insanely tight, but it should feel tight because um, it, it will loosen off as you use it and when you get it in the water as well. Um, so I would look for nice, for some flexibility in the shoulders. Most wetsuit brands that are made for swimming all have it. I mean, they're mm -hmm. all very similar. Um, and I, I wouldn't go really high, high end, like the thousand dollar range or, or whatever it is now. Um, cause there's not that much of a difference. And when I, so when I talked about the flexibility in the shoulders, there is more flexibility cause they use, um, a higher end neoprene elasticity in some of the higher branded or the higher cost of the wetsuits. Um, but again, sometimes I find, cause I have two, I have a, I have a lower end and a higher end and I'm going to do some tests actually, hmm. where sometimes the lack of flexibility allows me to just keep my, my shoulders in a really 
good position to catch the water. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm going to experiment that a little bit. So Oh, I have one of each too. So you yeah, can tell should, me what we should test. We should test. Yeah. Well, and then... Just um, swim out to the branch on our pond yeah. back and see how fast it is and then do it again. Oh, that would be a great idea. Yeah. Let's. That means I have to get out of a wetsuit and yeah, back into yeah. a wetsuit. I'll or just, just do it on opposing days. No, no, no we should do it on the same day, same conditions. Well, yes, that's true. So, and I, when I first started triathlon, I started with a sleeveless wetsuit. It was just a little bit more, I felt, well, it was a little bit cheaper. And also I was a little worried about the range of motion with my shoulders and I don't know why. And, and that worked for two whole seasons. It was great. And then I upgraded to a long sleeve and then I changed brands. And so you know, uh, we interviewed uh, your our friend Lenny. Lenny, who always swims. She's a pro, and she swims in a sleeveless wetsuit. I think almost the whole when she's yeah, allowed she's to use a wetsuit. One of the only ones that I know yeah. that does it um, more for anxiety issues and stuff. And she's mm-hmm. very open about it. Yeah, she just feels like it's less claustrophobic to her. Mm-hmm. Um, but she's really the only one. That I know. <laughs> and quite honestly, I mean, for her, it's probably faster because she's not having issues. Um, but for ninety nine percent of the people, I would say that a, a sleeve a sleeved wetsuit is faster. I mean, it's, it's been well documented. Mm-hmm, yeah. Um, unless you have like an insanely wide shoulder range, mm-hmm. um, which I don't think m- not that many people have, because they do make the wetsuits in a big range, and and the flexibility is available there. Um, but mm-hmm. I mean, the more neoprene you have on you, the better. Yeah, that is true. Yeah, you're right. You're right. I need all I can get. And then the other thing is uh, don't make the mistake that I made. I was using the wrong size wetsuit for a good amount of time um, until Angela and I realized we were in the same size wetsuit and she's taller than me. And she was like, why are you wearing a small? And I was like, I have no idea. (laughs) So I got the extra small. It fits so much better. Um, So, And if you can't try it on in a store... You can order it, and if it doesn't fit, I think you can send yeah, it back. Yeah, most companies do that. Yeah. And the other thing is you don't want any, like, ripples or mm-hmm. – I mean, you want it tight. Like, you want it as a second skin. And, mm-hmm. um, I mean, sometimes wetsuits, just because of the different body types we have, they, they'll they'll have a little bit of fold. Like, I have some in the belly that shouldn't be there, but, I mean, I can't go to an extra small. It's too tight everywhere else, mm-hmm. especially on my shoulders. Um, so you just kind of have to make do with that. But if you have, like – folds of neoprene yeah. on you I mean you're just gathering water in there it, it's not really helping you at all yeah and then the when you put your wetsuit on I use you know use body glide or tri slide it helps you get it on and off mm-hmm. but really make sure mm-hmm. that you're pulling it up <laughs> And like up to your crotch, up through your shoulders. Like high and tight. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, start shimmy it up. We were um, at the pond and this awesome guy that we know, he just had the worst time putting on his wetsuit and she just wasn't pulling it up. And so I was like, you got to kind of pull it up like pantyhose. I don't even know, like kind of shimmy it up there uh, and make sure it's really, like you said, high and tight and have somebody help you if you need to put some lube on and that will help. And one thing I like to do before I get in the water is make it so high that you have ripples in your shoulder because mm-hmm. over time that'll, as you start to swim, it'll stretch out a bit. Um, but that's how high you want it up first mm-hmm. and foremost. Cause that, cause like as it gets wet, it'll kind of get back into your body and, and f- form itself. But then you don't want to make you want to make sure you have enough flexibility in your shoulder and that's that, that's a good way to do it. Yeah, and if the wetsuit is choking your neck, first check how you have pulled it up. Like did you pull it up under the shoulders? Is it pulled all the way up in the back? But even though a wetsuit should be tight, it it shouldn't be like cutting off your jugular. So mm-hmm. it could be that brand is not the one mm-hmm. for you. Um And if you've tried a wetsuit and you're like, oh God, it just felt like it was choking me. I'm never wearing a wetsuit again. It could be the brand. Uh, There are certain brands that fit better than others. And I won't say that on here, but, um, and then uh, the other thing before we move on from wetsuits, when do you know when to get a new wetsuit? I know you get, you're sponsored. So you get a new one. I mean, I don't know, every season, maybe more, more. She's not saying how many wetsuits she has, Um, but when do you think we should change our wetsuits? Um, I would, I would say when it gets, uh, like sometimes the neoprene gets really light or you, um, Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, obviously if there's holes in it, yeah. Um, I've actually raced with some holes just by accident because I I had an old wetsuit carried with me 
I mean, it's totally fine. You can do it. Um, just not, it's pencil, obviously big bear. Mm-hmm. But I mean, if you take care of your wetsuit, they can last a couple years, hundred yeah. um, percent. And it, it, it also depends how often you're using it. It's true. If you're going open water all summer with it, I would, I would just check the flexibility of it. How, how it's fitting you. If it's becoming really, really loose, you might want to actually use that one as a training one and then buy a new one for just racing. Cause then it will last even longer. Um, sometimes like the wetsuit I have, um, I have the higher end of the blue 70 and I've had one suit for quite some time and there's part of it on the forearms that are made of like a really light material Yes, and it's getting all ripply and mm. stuff. So that actually catches water. So that's now my training suit. Mm-hmm. Um, so I just kind of move it like that. It, it's kind of like shoes, I guess, mm-hmm. you know, you can kind of tell when they're worn out, um, right. but I wouldn't say there's a set amount of mileage you can get in just. I mean, it really depends how you take care of it. And the best way to take care of it, I mean, try not to use it in a pool by any means. If you do, uh, rinse it right away because the chlorine kills the neoprene. Um, and uh, just make sure that when you take it on and off that you're really careful with it. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I mean, and don't leave it out in the sun uh, because that kind of screws up the neoprene as well. Um, Oh my gosh. I left, I actually, I left mine. I left mine out there, out but was, I mean, it had no, been too it. hot, but I and mean, it was, it was inside out. Cause it was yeah. the thermal, but I forgot about it for like 36 hours. And I looked out on the deck and I was like, Oh my gosh. Well, it, well it's funny. Cause, uh, cause I leave all like, I, like if you ever need swim stuff, find my car, <laughs> you know, like 50, 50 pairs of goggles and but sometimes if I leave the goggles on the front passenger seat and it gets a lot of heat, mm-hmm. the rubber around yeah. the around the goggles on the eye socket completely get like malformed and stuff and then they're useless. And so it's the same thing with the neoprene. And sometimes I leave my wetsuit in my car. <laughs> so, you to, so you just have to be really careful. Yes. All right. So let's talk about getting into open water and and swimming. So there are a few things we're going to talk about. We are going to touch on, actually, we're going to talk a lot about panic in open water um, in a little bit, especially when we talk about racing. But we want to talk about how do you change your workouts when you first go from pool to open water? How do your workouts change? And what can you do to, you know, make things more interesting in open water instead of just swimming like, 1K, 2K, mm-hmm. which I absolutely very much love. I love just a steady swim. But so how can you mix it up in open water? So talk about some of your favorite like open water workouts or things you like to do. Well, when I first get in water, I just do go for time yes. or duration um, in terms of of the mileage just because uh, I'm getting used to it. Mm. I, I actually haven't done an, um, an outdoor workout yet. Um, I, I'm probably going to do one tomorrow. But now you can actually put them on your Garmin um, where you can say, you know, five by 100 yards and and you can put it all like if you have training peaks, you can literally put an entire workout with beeps and everything. And Mm so I'm trying that tomorrow. I've never tried it, tried it prior to this. Um, But in previous times, I just go by time. So I've set my Garmin to beep every 500 yards. Mm -hmm. Um, that's just a standard for me. But then if I'm doing a workout, I can always look at my watch for time. Um, so sometimes I do, uh, let's say five by three minutes hard Mm -hmm. with a hundred strokes easy. So I, I, I look at my watch and say, it's like, I'm not like scientific, but but let's say it's like 24 minutes into my warm up. Okay. Mm -hmm. I said, okay, I'm going to go three minutes hard. Mm -hmm. So I can kind of estimate, I look at my watch as I'm swimming. And once I get to three minutes, then I count like 50 to a hundred strokes easy. I don't care about the time. And then I look yeah. at my watch again. Okay. It's 27, 30. Okay. So in 30, 30, I stop. And so it doesn't have to be so structured because it is open water. Everything's different. I don't necessarily always go by the distance because the watches are notoriously terrible mm-hmm. at doing that. But, it, but, but, but if I do, then I just go by that time. Like, like if it's 20 seconds off or, you know, I, I just, it doesn't matter. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah you're saying this. I'm but saying <laughs> it. I'm saying it. Well, you know, what's funny is I actually have in terms of workouts, I have my Garmin beep every hundred yards. Mm-hmm. And the reason I do that or vibrate, I guess, mm-hmm. because, uh, the reason I do that is because for me, it's a reset for form. Mm -hmm. And I don't look at it or anything. And I just like the little buzz of like, okay, 
focus back on this, focus back on this. Um, And then sometimes I will use it to go like a hundred easy, hundred hard, or I'll focus on one, like I do in the pool. Mm -hmm. I'll be like, all right, we'll just focus on hand entry for this hundred Mm -hmm. because you talk about counting strokes. I am the most terrible counter. Oh, so am I. I mean, I I think in my 50 or 60, I mean, (laughs) I just, I just reset. Yeah, 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 (laughs) yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And because we swim in the same pond most all Mm -hmm. summer, you often, what the reason I love doing that is because you almost know the distance to different Mm -hmm. markers. So so if you, if you don't want to wear your watch, which we will talk about, you can also just say, all right, I'm going to swim this way or this hard to this branch. And then Mm -hmm. I'm going to go here and I'm going to go there. And, uh, I love doing that too, but oftentimes I just like going out and swimming and just enjoying the open water. Yeah. And I think part of what we're saying too, is try to go by perceived effort. Like Mm -hmm. when you're, when you're in a race, you know, you're going eight out of 10 efforts. So do some intervals at an eight or 10 effort. Um, Mm -hmm. and I mean, like, like try to mimic what you would do in races just by perceived effort wise, not necessarily, you know, a pace or set time or whatever. Um, Mm -hmm. kind of create it like a fart lick Mm -hmm. in the water. Mm Mm-hmm. Yes. And so speaking of creating something like it's in a race, another thing you can do in open water is swim with other people and swim near them. And especially if you are not confident in a race environment with having lots of people around you, you want to mimic that in a race. Now, you know, so you can have somebody right next to you. You can try to follow their feet. You can have somebody bump into you, uh, knock hands with you. I don't even know, do whatever you need to do to feel comfortable with somebody around you and realize that, yeah, you might get bumped a little bit, but you can keep going and keep swimming. Mm -hmm. Um, I also like to practice race starts. You start in the water. Not not all the time. Oh yeah. We have running starts. Oh, do you? Okay. We have all sorts. So I like to practice running into the water, swimming 10 or 20 strokes and then going easy back out and running into the water again. So I can feel that heart rate jump and then calm down. Mm -hmm. So that is something that I have to do just to keep my, you know, race head intact. (laughs) So I don't panic in the water in in a race start. Uh, And that's also, I also practice when I'm finished, I practice swimming right until I can feel my hands and then getting up. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I practice actually race exits too. Do you ever do dolphin dives? Um, I know how to do it. So (laughs) she's looking at me because now I'm like, Oh, now I know what we're going to practice next. Do you mean uh, when you go in, when you go in or out? Um, I have, if it's, um, and I've only done this twice or three times, if it's an ocean Mm. with some waves, I dolphin dive under the waves. Um, but I think I've only had to do that twice, but no, I never dolphin dive in or out in a race because mm-hmm. I don't know why I just kind of just go. I'm well, like, it's definitely faster. Is so it? Try it. Mm-hmm. Like how much faster? I don't know. Let's, let's try. Let's try it. it. We have, okay. That's our second test. I want to know how much faster <laughs> dolphin diving is. It does look very cool though. Well, and it just gives you a little bit of a break too. Like, yeah, it just depends if you know how to do it right. And you can propel yourself from the, from the ground mm-hmm. forward. I mean, it's way faster than swimming 20, like five strokes or whatever. Yeah. You know, oh, okay. Dive in, dive out, dive in, dive out. I mean, that's I'll why practice. dolphins are the way they That's why they dolphin. That's, that'll be my next mantra. Be a dolphin. Be a dolphin. Be a dolphin. Be a dolphin. Okay. So now let's talk about, uh, what is one of the biggest differences in open water is sighting. Um, mm-hmm. so let's talk about how do we master sighting in open water? Um, tips and tricks for that. So let's think about that. Yeah, my biggest thing is I like to breathe only to one side. I mean, I can breathe to both and mm-hmm. I do breathe to both. But when you're learning to sight, find one that is the most comfortable. Okay. That's what I like to do. And I like to think of it as, let's say you breathe to the left. When, when your entry into the right goes in the water, you're going to li- kind of lift mm-hmm. up your upper end of your body just try to have your eyes out of the water. That's when you sight. And then you want to put your head back and then, and then you want to, um, so, sorry, you want to sight and then pull your head to the side to breathe and then take your stroke with your left. Right. Um, that's kind of like the format that I like to do. Some people 
sometimes uh, breathe and then sight, but I just think it's very, very complicated for a lot of people to figure that, that type mm -hmm. of rhythm out. And what I like to teach people is try to find a, find like a gallop stroke as you're breathing and as you lift your head, because it really helps you learn how to sight and breathe without having to like pause your stroke in between. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I generally just go in the water and I mean, you're kind of forced to fight mm -hmm. for that when you go into open water. Um, prior to open water, I, I do a lot of hit up drill. Um, I sight in the pool sometimes because it just helps me find that find that rhythm. Um, but it's just something you have to practice, practice, practice. And, mm -hmm. um, everyone can find it, mm -hmm. but very much so. But, mm -hmm. um, I would try to breathe with one arm forward and it's kind of pressing down the water so that it's lifting your head slightly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the one thing I do well in open water is I swim fairly straight and I sight well. So <laughs> I've got mm -hmm. that going for me. And I also, of course, you have to remember that when you're just swimming on your own, you're not there. Aren't, the buoys aren't out unless, mm -hmm. um, you know, there are some places where some of you swim that have some courses marked. When I went up to, well, Lake Placid has little balls out a lot. Mm -hmm. And, um, and of course they're cable, but when we were, I was up in Tremblant, I know you race there, but I was up there just swimming and they have a whole area marked out for swimming. So they had little buoys up there so you could sight those uh, as you went. But I also just sight like on our pond, like a kayak or a tree or something like that uh, and, and aim for that. So practice sighting every, you know, four to six strokes, or if you're not in a race, Sometimes you just swim and then you forget that you haven't, <laughs> sometimes I forget. I'm like, oh, I got to look up and see where I'm going. Uh, so that is also something to practice. I like how you talked about that gallop stroke, because that's what mm -hmm. it feels like when you lift your head up a little bit to mm -hmm. sight. Mm -hmm. um, and that's something to practice. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Let's talk about, uh, before we move on to feeling super confident in open water and how to keep your mind on, I do want to talk about the watch. <laughs> let's bring it up <laughs> the pregnant pause <laughs> um so we even if you listen to the last episode where Angela was giving me crap about my watch it is uh it is true first of all you are going to be most of you are going to be slower the watches in open do water. not do accurate gps no water. simple as that it's done simple so why even use it <laughs> as a tool to compare yourself day to day to day, uh, even if it's the same watch, the GPS is not accurate. So Amy, <laughs> this is a question for you. Yes. Why yeah. do you compare yourself every single time you swim? You do. I because do. Because you're like, oh, I swim so slow today. I know. Or like you, you, you have a mind fuck. <laughs> get rid of it all right all right why? all right so when, here is why which when is, you know yeah you know the yeah. gps is not accurate. yes it okay is not accurate we're gonna fight about this no <laughs> and what is hilarious is i have no issue with this on the bike and the run like i i can do a run that is slow a run that is fast okay so I, so why is it just for the swim and what and what is your issue my issue is because the swim in my head is my weakest and okay. it's the one I have worked so hard to try to improve. And so, okay. Yeah. Let me just stop you. Yeah. The watch is not accurate. The watch isn't accurate. All right. That's, that's a fact. Okay. okay. Yeah. You go for a swim. Yeah. Your time is 155 per hundred pace. Okay. The next day, <laughs> <laughs> the next day it's 220. Right. What the watch is not accurate. Correct. Done. All right. What, what's, what's, what's the issue here? What are you comparing yourself to? Um, I don't know. It's you're a good question. No, no. It's yeah. simple. Yeah. <laughs> that was a rhetorical question. <laughs> yes. You're, you're comparing yourself uh, to something that is not accurate. Right. Right. Done. Done. <laughs> Done. Done. Go for time. Yes. If you're going to use the, the timing yeah. thing or the yardage. Right. It's just, it's yeah. just time. Well, and also it's not, it's also that it's also conditions. Like our 100%. pond can get, our pond can oh, yeah. get crazy windy. Like you get out there and you're flying in one direction and then you turn around and you're like, uh Oh, I'm in trouble. It's going to take me twice as long to get back. But the other thing, the thing that was funny is just recently my husband and you were swimming mm -hmm. 
and you had different brand watches. I'm not sure or something. We had different brand watches. I was swimming quite a bit faster than him because I was doing like going back and forth to him and yeah. stuff. And when we got out, because I see his training peaks and his pace was way faster than mine. Yeah, and yeah, I, yeah. So I was so I asked him what what watch he was, and it was a totally opposite watch. But that's a prime example. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like complete example. Well, you mean, and his, and then you know what he said to you? He said, well, when you passed me, you were swimming slower yeah, than yeah. me. <laughs> you passed me, you were swimming slower than me, which I thought was hilarious. But yeah, it's a prime example. All right. My summer goal is to not get tied up in pace in open water. Yeah. And it also, I have learned a lot from you because you're, when we talked, we just talked about this last week, but this is specifically about swimming, that you're, when you're doing your practice swims outside, you it's are like 20 to 30 seconds slower per hundred. Like then, then your race, then your race, or even in the pool. Definitely, I knew that in the pool for sure. But in like the in the pool, it's probably 30 to 40 seconds. Like, yeah. Like I'm like, let's say in the pool, if I'm doing say 120s, yeah, or like 117s. That's yeah, kind of my average. Then when when I'm open water with a wetsuit, I'm yeah, like 145, yeah, 150, and, and that's that... just like. What? That and that sense. is something, and it sounds so crazy because everybody knows, oh, you're faster in a pool, you're faster in a pool, whether it's because you're doing flip turns, there's no current, there's no sighting, whatever it is. Well, you are, yeah. Yeah. I mean, um, but when you, when you told me, like, you're, like, specifically, like, I need data, like, yeah. these are the paces. It's like, all right, but how much faster are you? 10 seconds? And you're saying you are, it's, like, vastly different. And, but also when you race, yeah, you're... Faster much faster less, oh, yeah yeah and I mean it's a race so it's a little I know but I've done like intervals I've done tried sets I mean it's it, it, it ranges from day yeah. to day yeah I mean there was one one swim I did a couple of years ago I mean because I remember it and I was like I was swimming my hardest and mm -hmm. I was I was like 155 and yeah. like I don't swim that and yeah. I it was it was completely absurd yeah. and off and so yeah. ever since that swim I was like this thing is just going to show me time and distance and the yeah. distance is totally off, but I'm just going to use yeah. it as, as a tool. Yeah. Um, so yeah. I really do a lot by time. And, and again, once you know your swimming hole, like, mm -hmm. like we know from like everyone that swims that from the beach to the, to the branches, 400 yards. Mm -hmm. So that's a good tool to go across the whole pond. It's like 1500 basically, mm -hmm. if you go straight. So I kind of use that, you know, and the perimeter and... is like 4k, I yeah, think like, like there's been times my watch has died, like literally just before I get to the pond. I'm like, oh. and then, so, or I forget my watch and mm -hmm. I'm like, well, I'm, I'm, I'm supposed to swim 45 minutes. I know that this far is this way. And I, mm -hmm. and I just estimate it. Yeah. 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 I'm going to swim more <laughs> yeah. without my watch. She's laughing at me, but I think also oh. because I have been, you know, I just was, I'm so I don't, not even self-conscious. It's just like, I, I put such high expectations on myself, um, to, because I've worked so hard on my swim, but I also have not done, well, I guess I did a race. But it was what, a wacky but race. Again, and you're putting on these expectations on I something know. that is completely, completely false. I know. I know. You know what I need to do is just race more so I can, <laughs> so I can just get these like race times and be like, Oh, look what I can do. But it's, yeah, it, I don't even know. And, and we just talked about this last week too. It's funny because I can give my athletes the advice that I need to give myself mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and I just need to internalize it, but I'm getting so close <laughs> to not We will caring. pop the champagne when that happens. Yeah. You let me know. Because the other thing <laughs> is when we talk about going by feel and in open water, I actually feel so good swimming in open mm -hmm. water. Mm -hmm. I feel smooth. I feel, I feel fast. I feel like a dolphin. Um, and I just love being out there. So, which is the whole, the whole point of swimming, you know, it's mm -hmm. to just love being out in your lake, in your pond. And which leads us to what happens when you don't feel that way. So let's move into the kind of the fear of being in open water and also how that might translate into racing or you're very comfortable in open water. And when you get into a race, you panic. Mm -hmm. um, so let's first talk about those two things. So if you're listening to this and maybe you don't live right next to or near open water. So when you finally get to it once a week, once every other mm -hmm. week, it's very, very seems overwhelming. So let's talk about some tools we can use just to feel more comfortable 
in open water, whether that's ocean, bay, little lake, swimming yeah, hole. I mean, if you're going into a race and you haven't done open water, I would try to get there early as possible. And if you can't, even if it's the day before, get in the water. Just get yourself a little bit acclimated, I guess, as best you can in terms of what the water will feel like, mm -hmm. what you'll feel like in the surroundings. Maybe find um, things you can cite, like a building or a tree, because mm -hmm. um, usually they have the swim course set the day before at least. Um, but I, I try to encourage my athletes to, to get in the water, um, unless it's like really, really dirty water. Um, I wouldn't do that. But um, uh, that's one way. Um, I mean, that's the biggest way. A good warm up. I know these days you're not always allowed in the water before races, which is kind of frustrating. Um, but if that's the case, what I like to do is make sure your, your face is wet. Cause really it's the shock of the face that gets you the first where it's like <gasps> that kind of feel. Mm -hmm. So if it's cold water, get water on your face and near your mouth and just like get that part of your body, um, exposed mm -hmm. to the water first. Um, uh, what else can you do? Oh, are, are we, are we talking about racing? Well, I'm just talking about in terms oh, of in general, uh, if you get nervous, but yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, definitely yeah, yeah, yeah. racing. But if you're nervous in water, I mean, just start slow. I mean, go in for five to 10 minutes and stay near mm -hmm. the shore and then slowly progress. Yep. It's um, funny. Um, I was going to say stay near the shore, but I have people who, I know people who don't like to see the bottom because they get worried they're going to see like a turtle or a fish and they'd rather the not part. see. I know. <laughs> and I know people who would rather see the bottom. So it also depends on your comfort zone. Um, I, we have a little almost like an inlet before you kind of go out that you can just go back and forth, use a safer swimmer buoy to feel more comfortable, have a partner, um, have somebody on a paddle board mm -hmm. if you can next to you, because then you can hang on. Uh, and a, a really good thing that helps me sometimes when I get panicky mm -hmm. is I say something over and over and over again, mm -hmm. or I count one, two, three, yes, one, counting two, three, one, two, yeah. one, two, or be strong. Um, you know, just say something and concentrate on those two or three words um, and it'll calm you down pretty quick as well. And mm -hmm. then the other thing is when you get panicky, do a forced exhale because mm -hmm. that kind of just resets your system because you're like, <gasps> and then mm -hmm. just whoosh, like really, really hard, hard exhale kind of just resets the system and do that a few times. Like, like even when you get exposed to cold, cold. Or when things yes. get really, really hard. I mean, on the bike, <laughs> this is so funny. I, I know we're talking about swim, but on the bike, even um, when things go hard, I, I don't know what I do. But you feel like, what is she doing? I, I was like, I go, woo! Like, you like, do? Oh, yeah, totally. <laughs> and it, like, it's just like a reset. And it just, I do it subconsciously. Do you do it in races? Sure. Oh, yeah. No, I do. Oh, yeah. that's awesome. And then sometimes when I'm really panicky, I do a mm -hmm. force, force exhale. And it really, really helps. You try to woo yeah. underwater. Yeah. Woo! Oh, I'm sure I have. <laughs> <laughs> I sing. I do it running too. I sing underwater. I sing, not like actual, like I sing in my head when I start to get panicky. So just for, before we actually get into race, we kind of started talking about it, but when, I mean, the best way to get over fear of anything is to do it over and over and over. So, yeah. um, and just keep exposing yourself and you will feel more and comfortable. I think what questioning where is this fear coming from like, mm -hmm. like what are you afraid of right. drowning okay so let's think about it. have you ever drowned before mm -hmm. no mm -hmm. okay what kind of like elements are you thinking about that you are gonna like mm -hmm. drown and like go over the process of where this fear like is based out of and mm -hmm. realizing that it's just false you know you know i actually know somebody on cape cod when she was little she did almost drown Okay. And then she can relearn to swim as an adult. Mm -hmm. And now she does triathlon. Mm -hmm. And every time in the beginning, when she gets into open water every season, she has to like mm -hmm. go through all of her things. But yeah, so she overcame. She a, almost drunk, but she did not. Well, she drown. didn't. But what I'm saying is she was a kid. So yeah, that yeah. sticks with you. Yeah. Like she had that traumatic experience. But what I'm saying is she got over it. I actually have never, she's the only person mm -hmm. I have ever met who mm -hmm. actually has almost drawn. Um, safer swim buoy. Yeah. All sorts of things. Think about what, like you said, like what you're afraid of and then walk yourself through it. Because the first time I ever got in open water, it was chilly. I was wearing a surf wetsuit and which I would recommend not don't do me. it, but it was the only thing I had. It was like end of May here in Cape Cod and I'll never forget. And I had a full blown, like hyperventilation <laughs> panic attack. And then I swam and I was okay. <laughs> and then I got a real wetsuit. But so and you that, can... and, and the other thing too is I've done races and stuff where I've had panic attacks, 
um, especially when I was exposed to freezing cold water. It was like in Colorado, I drank so much caffeine because it was like four in the morning. It was, it was it, anyways, it all act like all came up to this huge panic attack in the race. The best thing to do is just float on your back, like yep. get on your back and just <gasps> nice, slow, slow breaths. And if you're in a crowd of people, um, still just get on your back. Like that's the best feeling because if you're panicking and you're, and you're, and you're upright, people can still like think mm. you're swimming mm -hmm. and they'll pummel over you and stuff. So the best thing is just create space with yourself and mm -hmm. go on your back, put your arms out, get really, really, really good breaths. Um, mm -hmm. that would be my biggest recommendation. Yeah. And so let's talk about race day. Uh, I have had a panic attack in the water in our short sprint triathlon I just went out way too hard and I held, I held onto a kayak literally for five seconds, mm -hmm. just re I was like, okay, I'm good. And I kept going. And so let's talk about how to avoid that panic. So first of all, make sure you get a good warm up. whether it get, and, and, get, and if you can't get in the water, right. Do arm circles, mm -hmm. jumping jacks, get some type of like sweat almost started. Mm -hmm. um, Cause that just kind of gets your system revved up to a, a good amount. And again, the water on the face, massive, especially mm -hmm. if it's cold exposure water. Mm -hmm. um, if you can pour water in your wetsuit, actually, mm -hmm. that kind of just creates a layering effect before mm -hmm. you get in the water. Um, yep. Yeah. Um, yeah. So think all of that, um, you know, even before you get in the water, you know, know the swim course, know how many buoys there is until the turn buoy. So you mm -hmm. can start counting buoys, you know, oh, there are four buoys until I get to that turn buoy. I'm just going to go count buoy to buoy. If it is a mass start and you're nervous, you know, start on the side or in the or, back or let people go. Yeah. yeah. You don't have to get in the mix. And one thing I like to do is. I trick my brain. I tell myself, Amy, you're just going out for a swim. <laughs> like you're just swimming. And sometimes I pretend I'm by myself, even though there are people around me. And I take that first hundred, depending on how I feel, you know, at, at a moderate pace. And oftentimes my moderate pace, when you kind of look back at the data is actually much faster than I <laughs> thought I was going because it's still a race. And I think that's what people do is they, they start out so fast and they don't realize mm -hmm. how fast they're doing. And then they get into that panic mode yeah. really, really fast. So, you know, start at like a seven or 10 effort versus like a nine out of 10. Yeah. <laughs> Cause you're not gonna be able to sustain the nine out of 10. Now, um, let me ask you a question because every video I have seen of like yeah. Iron Man starts. You guys have to start yes, there. You, I have no choice. <laughs> yeah. So you are there and you just go like as hard as hell. As hard as hell. Mm -hmm. And so do you have you it's very hard. It's very hard. Do you act do you ever practice that still or are you just so used to that now that no, you're I'm like never used to it. Yeah. Um I try to uh I should do more of it is what okay. I should say. Um, we're gonna do that. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's it's definitely yeah. just that 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 send out speed and then trying to settle in. And mm -hmm. the thing is, with most of those types of races, they're going as hard as they can, but people can only go as hard as they can for say three to five minutes. Mm -hmm. So that's something to practice, and then things just settle, yeah. like as if I'm swimming with them. So it is something to practice, but I don't know if it's for many, many races that are like that. Yeah. So. And I, I certainly don't go out like that. Um, I wish ours were. Like that. I know. And so sometimes you start out and then a couple hundred yards in your brain can start to kind of go into that. Oh, we're in a race. Uh, just like what Angela says, you can float on your back. You can sing to yourself, counting your strokes distracts your brain, yeah. things like that. But also remember, this is something actually recently I'd like to remember is just like when you're in a running race or you're biking and things get really hard or like something might hurt and then it goes away. You mm -hmm. know how you have ups and downs. That's what your brain is sending just a short little fast signal like not to panic, but like, oh my gosh, things are happening, mm -hmm. but let it go through you. That is going to settle down. Now I know that if I'm at the second buoy and all of a sudden my brain starts to go crazy, it's, it's going to disappear. And it does. And, uh, you know, but no shame in hanging onto a kayak, uh, anything like that. Those people are out there. They're super nice. Breaststroking is okay. Mm -hmm. Um, anything like that. Well, one buoys. thing that happens mm -hmm. sometimes too, is when you're doing a turn buoy, people get really, really crowded. Yeah. So preemptively think about that and maybe go, go out a bit wide. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people try to go right to the buoy and then do this quick 90 degree turn. <laughs> yeah. If you're not, if you don't really know how to do that, 
it just becomes this like like 10 people on top of you so just go a little bit wider if you haven't had that practice or experience uh, it'll be a lot smoother yeah and don't be afraid you know of of a little contact i i think i said it in one of our podcasts but i did that crazy florida 70.3 swim which is an m shape mm -hmm. so there were a bazillion buoy turns and everybody was just i got everybody was around each other i got so knocked around in that swim but I was in a wetsuit. So I felt I was a little, it was a lake, but I was more buoyant and I just loved it. And I don't like contact in the water, <laughs> but I was like, let's go. Like people mm -hmm. are knocking me. It was fine. Um, and that every swim race, like you just get more confident or you tuck that experience in your back pocket and you're like, okay, I can handle that. Like I have heard, like you have talked about, and I've read that Lake Placid, although is one of the most beautiful swims, uh, that it's a very kind of crowded because you it's a two loop swim the lake is actually oh, not yeah. that big it's that really it's a very crowded. contact heavy swim <laughs> so just a lot of people on a little lake so i'm ready for it yeah be fun. <laughs> it will be fun all right now let's talk about to end this or almost end it the swim skin mm -hmm. because we have talked often on here that you a lot of your races are often not what's illegal anymore because of the lowering of the swim cutoff. So you're often in a swim skin. Yes. And as the temperature climbs, there are races now that used to be wetsuit legal for age groupers that are not. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about what a swim skin is and should people be going out and getting one? And if so, why? Yeah. It's basically like a bathing suit, but not made out of the same materials. Um, okay. I love wetsuit uh, swim skins because basically most suits you wear have pockets and all this stuff mm -hmm. um so it's just easier to have that all nice and tight against your body so swim skin allows for that um so it makes you faster in the water with if you have one or you don't have one mm -hmm. um they do make some that are sleeveless and sleeved i haven't had that much experience with the sleeved i'm going to start trying it a little bit more um only because i think it might keep me warmer oh yeah it's yeah it's covering oh, my yeah. armpits i didn't even think about that um so yeah, that's, that's my biggest thing is my biggest thing is how I'm going to stay warm. So <laughs> I've been researching all sorts of stuff. Um, cause I just need it. And, uh, yeah. yeah. Swim skins are fast though. I mean, uh, if, if you have a non wetsuit swim, uh, and you have a two piece tri suit or even a one piece with pockets, I mean, it just makes more sense. And you can also, if it's like a sprint or an Olympic, you can wear your race belt underneath it. And then that's oh. a really, really quick way. So you don't have to add that to your transition. Oh, but you don't. Yeah. Unless if you need it on the bike, I have worn a swim. Oh yeah. Yeah. They yeah. Do, they do. They do different rules. So. Yeah. I have worn a swim skin once in a race. That was the, uh, 70.3, uh, the one in, uh, St. George when the water oh, was okay. too, the one with the hurricane came through <laughs> when I was in the water. And so if you have a race that might not be wetsuit legal or, uh, please wear your please practice your swim skin wearing your swim skin mm -hmm. in open water again, in the pond it's supposed to be tight, tight yes tight, tight. because I did not so the first time I got into that practice swim feel. I had a I had a panic attack so I had a panic attack when when these swim skins first came out like mm -hmm. they were totally new to me uh, I mean, this is many years ago. I put it on and put it in the pool, and I was oh. having a panic attack in the pool in the middle <laughs> of the lane because it was so claustrophobic and such a different feel. Yeah. I, I had to hold onto the land, like the lines of the pool. Like, oh, that's like, illegal. No, I was kidding. <laughs> the lane lines. Because yeah, I was like <gasps> panicking. Oh my gosh, yeah, I was so nutty. So yeah, I, I would definitely practice it. I panicked because I started swimming in the lake in just a swim skin and my tri kit. And this was out there at yeah. one of the practice swims. And my brain all of a sudden said, Amy, you are not wearing a wetsuit. Like you're going to sink, which is so ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I, and I, it just, it went like, I was like, oh my God. And luckily it was this like official practice swim for Ironman. Mm -hmm. And there was a kayak right there, but I had to hold on to it. And it took me a good, like two minutes to gather myself <laughs> because I had not all summer, I had not swam without a wetsuit in yeah. our pond. And I was like, well, that was a dumb move. <laughs> uh, so if you know, it's, it's worth it. If you do a lot of racing, if you race in a warm climate, uh, and where the cutoff is dubious, mm -hmm. uh, to get a swim skin and just put it in your rotation. Dubious. 
dubious. I know. (laughs) I've been playing a lot of Wordle, so I'm very much a wordsmith. Um, All right. So some final thoughts on open water. Just a few things I want to mention. Um, Make sure that you go swim open water in different conditions. If it's a little windy, a little choppy, and safe, get out there and practice that. Don't wait for always perfect because your race might not be perfect. And learn to move with the water uh, because that's also really important, especially if you're, you know, in an ocean swim or something. Yeah, and one one thing we didn't t- touch on just because you said that. So when you have really really choppy water, you got to think about a shorter stroke versus mm-hmm. a nice long stroke. Because if you're in the pool, you can work on beautiful form and look amazing. But mm-hmm. choppy water is completely different swimming. So what I like to tell athletes is you almost have to fight back to the water that you're swimming in. So if it's super choppy or, or a wind coming toward you, it's almost like you need to kind of punch the water. And the, and the higher you can stay on top of the water, the faster you're going to be. So, so, so thinking about that as you swim, when you turn around, say, and you have the wind at your back or it's smoother, then you can focus on nice, long, strong, Mm -hmm. strong pulls and a stroke, um, and kick more. So it's just, it's just feeling the water, seeing how your body adapts to it and trying to work with the water Mm -hmm. rather than against it. We didn't even talk about kicking. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, mean, kicking, just very basic. Um, you do want a strong kick. I don't care who tells you not, you need a strong kick, even with a wetsuit. If you know how to use your kick with your stroke, it is very, very powerful. You're obviously going to stri- uh, kick a lot more without a wetsuit because you don't have the buoyancy. Mm-hmm. There's a two B kick. There's a four B kick and a six B kick. A lot of us, um, generally go to like a six B kick. Um, but if you can practice a two B kick and get that strong, powerful kick, even with a with an extra small kick in between with a wetsuit, it's very, very powerful. Nice. Yeah. All right. So hopefully you are about to enter open water. You're getting in open water. Send us questions at I race like a girl at gmail.com and a happy open water swim season. Yeah. Hey everyone. Thanks for listening. And we hoped you enjoyed it. You can find us at amywoodsfitness.com and angelanath.com. We'd love to hear from you.